You're listening to the Superpower Podcast, Superpower Kids Edition, where author, philanthropist, and Superpower Kids founder, Neverly Rekla, inspires kids to discover their superpowers and change Hi the world. Hi kids, this is your Superpower Kid, Neva Lee Rekla, and today I'm so excited what we're talking about. We are talking about the freedom of being an entrepreneur, and I think that's such an amazing concept because ever since I was little... My parents gave me the freedom of what I'm eating, what I'm putting in my body, and the fact that I'm homeschooled, and I'm actually done with fourth grade now, and that's so exciting. And to talk with us today is Tom Nardone, and he and I met at New Media Summit, and he was a mailman, which I thought was so cool, and he left that to become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. So, without further ado, will you help me welcome our guest, Tom Nardo? Hi, Tom. Hi, Neva. Thanks for having me on your show. I'm honored today. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. I'm so excited. Me too. <laughs> so, what are your superpowers? My superpowers are um, I take kind of run down, like beat up looking houses and I buy them up. And I remodel them and turn them into pretty looking houses. So we make ugly houses into pretty houses. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, So what was it like for you to be a mailman? Because I know for me, like when I'm a kid, now it's like, oh, it's so exciting to go to the mailbox and get the mail. And that's probably like it for other kids. So what was it like from your point of view to be in the truck giving out the mail? (laughs) Well, it it was a great job. And um, like you're in Phoenix where it can get really hot in the summer, I'm in Florida where it also gets really hot in the summer. But uh, aside from this millionaire mailman hat, which is what the MMM stands for, I also happen to have my old mail hat that I used to wear. That's awesome. I used to wear this out in the heat to keep the sun off of my ears and my neck and my shoulders. And uh, it was a great job. If somebody wants a good government job, being a mailman is a fun job because you get to work outdoors pretty much all day long. And uh, nobody's kind of watching over you, if you know (laughs) what I mean. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's so cool. And it's, It's exciting to know you get mail, you know? Yeah. And how long did you work? Did you work from a certain time or was it just until all the mail in your truck was gone? Well, yeah, you you pretty much um, said it right there. It's we would start at five a.m. in the morning, which yeah, it's usually still dark out when we would go into work. That's way and, too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's early for most adults and everybody <laughs> in general. But the reason we go in so early is because all those individual letters and those packages they all need to be put in proper delivery sequence. We line them up. You know, so that when you're walking down the street, you know, 123 Main Street will be right next to, you know, 234 Main Street and so on down the road. So we put it in delivery order. And then, as you said, we go through our day and pretty much when we have it all delivered is when we're done for the day. Nice. Yeah. And do you get like, I noticed that sometimes... Like, in order to open a mailbox, you have to use a key. So, did you get all those keys for the mailboxes? Yes, yeah. And and people don't realize this, but that one key the mailman has pretty much opens up every single mailbox in the whole entire city. Wow. Believe it or not. Yeah, it's really weird. Because you, you, you kind of, boy, they put a big sense of responsibility uh, on you to not ever lose that key. In fact, if you ever noticed mailmen, when they use that key, it's usually tied to the end of a chain. So unless that chain breaks, which is really strong, it's made out of a really strong metal, then, you know, you should not lose that key. But uh, I've, I've seen guys lose them before, and that's a big deal because now somebody has access to open up other people's mail, which is a bad thing. Yeah. And that's kind of interesting how one key can open 
a bunch of mailboxes because, like, if our key were to use it on somebody else's mailbox, they wouldn't open it. Right, right. And cool. same thing for, like, people's houses. You know, most houses, everybody's got their own door key, and it probably would not work in somebody else's. But, yeah, the yeah. post office, when you think about it, one mailman delivers to, like, five or 600 houses. So if everybody in an apartment building per se had a different key that they had to use, they would have to have hundreds of keys. So therefore they bring it all to just using one key for everything. Yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah, it is. That's awesome. So what inspired you from doing that, which I thought was amazing to becoming the exciting entrepreneur? What inspired you to change um, to being a mailman, to becoming your own entrepreneur? Yeah. Well, g excellent question. Um, the mailman job is a really good job and it has good benefits. And, and by benefits, I mean, you know, they pay for you um, for your health insurance. So if you get sick, you can go to the doctor and a lot of those expenses are covered for you. And they have great like life insurance. You, you lose a loved one or something, you know, your family will get compensated. It had all those benefits. But you know, it was still a job. At the end of the day, I still had to punch a time clock. And my wife and I, we actually operate very independently ourselves. In fact, um, I went to public school, but both of my boys who are now grown, were both homeschooled. And my wife and I homeschooled them all through, you know, kindergarten. And they had one or two years where they went to a Christian school. And, but then they, they graduated and uh, it was a lot of fun. So we always believed in being more of an independent entrepreneurial type and not doing what everyone's doing. So being a mailman, I noticed that there were all these ugly looking houses on my routes and some of them were abandoned by people and the grass would be getting tall, like up to your knees. Wow. And, you know, the wood would be like just falling off the house. So I thought, wow, this is bad for the neighborhood because it makes the rest of the neighborhood look bad. And maybe if I could buy these homes and make a business out of seeing ugly houses on my mail routes and fixing them up, that my actual mail job could help me to get started as an entrepreneur. And that was how I used my job to actually move into the next part of my life, which is, you know, being an entrepreneur by being a real estate investor. That's awesome. I think that's cool because I like to do something similar but or mini. And I like to, like, take old, like, boxes and stuff and turn them into, like, doll houses mm -hmm. or things I can use for like outdoors or even though she doesn't really like it, I tried to make my dog a, um, like a house out of cardboard uh -huh. with glue and blankets and she didn't quite enjoy it. <laughs> so most of the things that I end up making for my dog end up for my dolls. Okay. But, yeah. That's why um, you're very resourceful. It takes yeah. a resourceful person to make a doghouse and then remodel that <laughs> so that it's made yeah. for dolls. But that's yeah. cool. Thanks. So we can actually talk a little bit more about this, but really fast, can you tell people where they can go to find out more about you? Yeah, I have a uh, website which is called millionairemailman.com. And Millionaire Mailman was kind of a nickname that people thought up for me when I still worked at the post office. And I, I don't, I hate to admit this in like a mean way, but sometimes when you work at a job and people don't want to see you get ahead of them or, or just kind of break out on your own, they got mean toward me and they started teasing me saying, one day you're going to be the ma millionaire mailman. One day you're going to be the millionaire mailman. And that's how the, the nickname kind of got stuck with me. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to prove you guys that I can do it. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm going to work till I get enough properties that I can quit my job and I'm going to leave the rest of you behind. And that's, that was kind of what I did. I just, you know, got my, my, my will up to say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a better life for myself. And I used my job to help me get there. And uh, it was, it was a journey, 
but it was a fun journey. That's awesome. And definitely go check him out. And we've been talking with Tom Nardone about the freedom of being an entrepreneur. We'll be right back. Are you here to change the world? Do you talk about things like vibration, frequency, awakening, and consciousness? Are you pretty sure you have superpowers? The Superpower Net is unlike normal coaching programs and conscious communities. We provide training, intuitive guidance, peer-to-peer learning, intensive one-on-one coaching, and a high vibrational network of people just like you. When you join the Net, you get 24-7 access to a collaborative group of people who support you as you master your personal power and unlock your superpowers. If you are ready to use your superpowers to change the world, then join the Superpower Net today. Visit superpowerexperts.com slash the net to learn more. Okay, we're back and we've been talking with Tom Nardone about freedom of being an entrepreneur. So, Tom, we actually have to do funny FaceTime. So, what's going to happen is... We have to make our funniest faces in three seconds. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> How'd I do? <laughs> Funny face. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Yours was good too. <laughs> Thank you. I always go to that one, but it always hurts my jaw. So, I don't know why I keep on doing it. <laughs> so, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. And what were you like as a kid? Oh, as a kid. Well, um, as a kid, I would love to adventure. I would, I, I used to love riding my bicycle. Awesome. And... I lived in an area that was very close to like horse farms and actually I'm talking to you. I don't know if you could see, this is my barn where I'm talking to you from. And that's awesome. Yeah, we have, um, we don't have horses. My neighbors have horses, but, um, uh, I used to like to adventure. We live near a horse farm. There's lots of wooded areas and I would ride my bike through the woods and explore trails and stuff. And that, that's what I like to do as a kid was explore. I would say more than that's anything awesome. yeah that's cool we like to go on a family bike ride and yeah. this was our first bike ride that the dog came on and so my mom we had this bag and my dog is very small so she fit in the bag mm-hmm. and we rode all the way to starbucks with her and <laughs> she didn't know quite what to do with herself but i would say she enjoyed it that's it was nice. fun yeah I enjoy exploring and I'm quite the swimmer. So I come up with like an obstacle in the pool where I have to like make it across the wall with only having this amount of space. So like I have to jump over places with my hands. Yeah. And then I have to swim underwater to the other side. I have fun. That's cool. I enjoy a lot of, a lot of swimming here in Florida too. Yeah. In Arizona, right now, it hasn't been the weather for it. Uh And I keep on asking my mom, when can we go in the pool without dying of freezing this? (laughs) I think think that's called hypothermia. Yes, it is. (laughs) Unless you have a heated pool, then you're okay. Yeah. We have a hot tub. That's helpful. Oh, yeah. We have a a hot tub and a heated pool, too. We don't use it very much, but... Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm kind of a, a a warm water chicken, I like to say, <laughs> unless it's yeah. like bathtub water. I don't like to go in. That that's how I am. If yeah. it's bathtub water and a little bit hotter, I I like that. That yep. I can do. But if it's like freezing cold, eh, well, I'm not going in. Me so, too. You said you like to explore as a kid. Did you? What other things did you like to do? So did you like to, like play games with friends, things like that? Yeah, I would say, um, but not so much like sports games. I, I, and maybe that's where I was a little different. I was not so much into like baseball and basketball. And everyone who always saw me as a kid would say, wow, you're probably on the basketball team because 
I'm six foot five, so I'm very tall. And people would think that, you know, I would make a good basketball player, but I was more like into motor sports. So I loved like uh, riding mini bikes and ATVs and motorcycles. And now I'm into airboating is one of my favorite things. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, it's uh, in fact, I have a picture of my airboat around here somewhere. There you go. Oh, I put it, can't remember where I put it, but um, anyway, an airboat is, uh, hang on one second, let me get it. You know, I can't remember where I put it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had a picture of my airboat sitting over here somewhere. But anyway, it's basically like a boat that goes through the swamp. It goes through the Everglades. So um, uh, in South Florida here, we have an area that's called the Florida Everglades, which is probably unique to any part of the country. I, I don't know that anybody else really has an Everglades. They've turned it into a national park. And... Uh, it's just a vast, large area that's kind of like swamp. It's over a million oh, acres. That's and cool. Yeah. So I have a boat, which has a huge airplane propeller on the back, and we actually drive through the swamp with it, and we see alligators and all kinds of animals. So mm. it's, it's really cool. What other animals are in a swamp besides alligators? Oh, boy. Yeah, lots, lots of snakes. And in fact, now they have these snakes that are um, uh, pythons, Burmese pythons, and <laughs> they're not supposed to be there. People were taking them as their pets, and as they would grow too big for their fish tanks that they had in their house, they would take them out to the Everglades and they would let them go, which is the wrong thing to do, you know? I mean, yeah. that upsets the balance in nature, so... There's literally like 20 or 30 foot long snakes out there now. They're huge. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want to go in that water. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah. My rule is water is yeah. whenever I go to like California or Florida, if I can, as long as I can still see underneath me, I'm fine to go in. Yeah. But if I can't see the water I'm stepping into, Mm -hmm. I don't tend to go in it, especially if it's in the wilderness, because yeah. I know the animals that are in the wilderness, and some of them I don't want to don't want to meet. <laughs> it's a wild jungle out there sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even sometimes with my pool, like when it's dark, mm -hmm. I can't see underneath me, <laughs> yeah. and so I'm like, I'll, I'll stay in one spot, even though I know there's nothing. You know. Like <laughs> you like to see the fish before they nibble on you, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I okay. know what that feels like. Yeah. Um, with the alligators you saw, were they big alligators? Like, were they decent size, like as big as the snakes? Yeah, they actually are. Um, hmm. I have a, well, I don't know if you can see it here, but I actually have a 10-foot um, a alligator that we caught. So you kind of. I don't know if you can see them up there. See them up there on the on the on the wall over there. Um. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, that's a ten foot alligator that we um, caught, and uh, we were hunting. We have the proper licenses to hunt, and then we um, send them out to uh, an alligator farm place that turns them into a skin so that they dry the skin and they dye the skin and I could take that I can make a purse for my wife That's I can cool. make a pair of cowboy boots for me if I wanted to so um, alligators they have a lot of uh, useful purposes in fact some people do eat the alligator meat too they huh. serve it in restaurants here in Florida oh I think I've had alligator meat and it looked oh. like calamari <laughs> okay. Yeah, calamari. Uh, I'm Italian, so we know what calamari is for sure. And uh, mm -hmm. I was raised on that. But yeah, in, in the South here, Southern states like Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Florida, for sure, we have, uh, they, they serve alligators in a lot of the seafood restaurants. Ooh, that's really yeah. cool. It's usually just little nuggets like you'd find chicken nuggets at McDonald's or something. It's not mm -hmm. you know, like a steak or anything like that, but that's usually how they serve it. That'd be really good, an alligator steak. 
How does that? <laughs> yeah, it tastes like a cross between chicken and fish, actually. Yeah. When, when you taste, it's kind of a strange combination. There's, it's yeah. got a unique flavor of its own. It does. Anytime I go to like the taste of most meat, mm -hmm. and it's like a meat I don't really know the flavor of, I go, it's just like chicken. Yeah. That's what I normally think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we actually have to do something called super Neva questions. Okay. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to ask you questions as fast as I can, and you're going to answer them as fast as you can. Okay. You ready? Ready. Okay. What's your favorite color? Blue. What's your favorite animal? Alligator. If you could fly or be invisible, which would you choose? Oh, that would be invisible. I would choose flight because you could go higher in places and you could like, you could be invisible because you would be so high up that people couldn't see. You. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Would you rather for the rest of your life live in a hot tub full of fudge, but it's like a regular size hot tub and it's fudge, not water, and you have to live there for the rest of your life, or a pool without water full of humongous marshmallows, and it's like a really deep pool. I'm a chocoholic, so I would have to pick the fudge. <laughs> The as only as reason the, fudge. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I wouldn't choose the fudge is because in Arizona again it gets way hot and so I would get too hot and I like space to roam around and stuff and I think that I could carve stuff into the marshmallows to make a living space. I think it'd be fun. I hadn't thought of that. Hmm. Fun. But chocolate is still number one in my book. <laughs> I would have to agree with that as well. Okay. So, if you could have a pet dragon or a pet unicorn, what would it be? I would say a dragon, because I think dragons are in the alligator family, and I do like alligators. Now, a pet dragon or a pet alligator? Uh, probably, probably pick the dragon because an alligator I can go and get in five minutes if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, yep. exactly. And with the dragon, I think that they would be, you would ha get to do more stuff with them because you'd get to like fly with them and stuff. Sure. And could, who, who needs a plane when you have a dragon? <laughs> yeah. And who needs a lighter when you have a dragon? <laughs> they can light my barbecue. <laughs> they can yep. light my campfire. Yeah. Yep. Like, if you're toasting marshmallows and you don't have a campfire, just be like. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Dragon Very. comes in handy around a marshmallow toast for sure. Yep. If you could be any inanimate object, what would it be? An inanimate object. Oh, yeah. It would probably be a laptop. A laptop. Yeah. I, I've never thought of that. That would be smart. Yeah. I'm, I would choose one of the electronics, like a TV, an iPad, a phone, or a laptop, because I think that you would have more usage. Mm -hmm. You'd just be able to, like... You would be able to know stuff. Yeah. You'd be able to like spy on people without them knowing. But right. Kind of be, being a spy. <laughs> it, would, it would be like a superpower, super mind, uh, being much. able to calculate any kind of math question or anything, right? You could do it yep. in seconds. Yeah. You have your own calculator. Yeah. Built in. Yep. I would watch that show, like a computer that is on legs and it like talks <laughs> and walks around and it like goes to school and it's the, and it always aces everything because it just knows. Sure. And it can secretly look up stuff. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I think we actually have those type of computers now, yeah, right? Like, almost like robots, right? Robots pretty much. Yeah. I, I want a robot that can like, you know, those moments and times where you're like, so hungry where you choose not to make yourself food. 
Mm-hmm. I've had those moments. And so if I could have a robot that could just be like, here, and just with the snap, I, I would have food in front of me. You know, it, it would be amazing. Sure. It's yeah. like having a personal waiter or a waitress that can exactly. wait on you. Yeah. Hey, the more we get into the future, it's, it's becoming a reality more and more every day. Exactly. Okay. So I don't know the difference between these two. But if you could have a best friend, would it be an android or a robot? I don't know the difference. I don't oh. know if they're the same. <laughs> you know, um, I think an androids app- might be smarter. Yeah, I you know I don't know, but I, I would okay. probably pick the robot. Um, yeah, I'd probably pick the robot only because I'm a Apple user <laughs> and my kids <laughs> don't like androids. But ah. I. Although that might be a different type of Android they're talking about, but I would probably pick the robot. Yeah, I would pick the robot because I think that androids are basically robots because, like, I think it's a type of robot. But Mm -hmm. like you said, I am an Apple user, and I think I I prefer being a robot because I know what they can do. Yes, yeah. And you could, like, program it like destruction of the world (laughs) might not be a good thing to have no 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 in case case the apocalypse come comes you you know where to go (laughs) that's that's a deep thought it kind of reminds me of that movie called the terminator from years ago have you Uh, ever seen that movie i have not but i will ask my parents if i can watch it (laughs) It was about kind of robots taking over the earth is basically what it was. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we sadly have to wrap up, but really fast, will you remind people once again where they can go to find out more about you? Yes, they can check out my website at millionairemailman.com because I used to be a mailman. See my mail hat. And mm-hmm. if you remember in San Diego, I let you wear my mail bag. I remember do. That? Yo. And I have it filled with houses. I have one. <laughs> and they're squishy houses too, right? They are. I like them. Yeah. It's good for relieving stress or just giving you something to do at the desk. It's exactly. like a little fidgety toy. You can just be like. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. In fact, that has my, it, it actually acts as a business card. Because it has it all my information. There's my information. Tom Nardo, MillionaireMailman.com. Yep. Exactly. That's where they can find out much more about me. Awesome. And once again, definitely go check him out because he's so amazing. And Tom, will you join me in the sign-off? I absolutely will. Okay. Remember, kids, we all have superpowers and we, we can, can change, change the, the world. world. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom, for coming on. Thanks for having me on your show, Neva. This was so much fun, and I really enjoyed doing this with you. Thank you for having me as your guest. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Superpower Up podcast, Superpower Kids edition. Go now to superpowerkids.com and discover your superpowers today. 